here as we gather to begin our Lenten journey tonight together. We are grateful to welcome our neighbors from the Duncan Presbyterian Church. For those who may not know me, I am Pastor Jennifer Tomirin. And for those who may not have met the pastors from the Presbyterian Church, I would like to introduce Pastor Suzanne and Roger Eitenbogart. And we are grateful to be able to worship together this evening. For our worship service, if you did pick up ashes or have ashes available to you, there will be a time during the service where you will be able to impose those ashes on your own forehead or on those within your family. And um, if you do not have ashes, please utilize um, the ability to simply make the sign of the cross on your forehead um, as a sign of the cross at that time. We begin our service. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Come, Holy Spirit. Friends in Christ today, with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover. From death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God and to love one another and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, and so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-explanation and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. We come to worship God as the season begins, aware of our frailty and our failings, we come seeking God's mercy, acknowledging our mortality, claimed by the waters of baptism. We come here to be marked now with ashes. May we learn what our God requires of us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly. Have mercy. 
confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Amen. According to God's steadfast love and abundant mercy, God does not pass judgment upon us as we deserve. God creates in us clean hearts and gives us a new and right spirit. In the grace of Jesus Christ, we return to God forgiven and cleansed from all our sin. Praise be to God for the gift of salvation. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God. 
sins to blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you say no delight is but sacrifice, for I will give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O God, you will not despise. Amen. <laughs>
Sunday was the anniversary of the Marjorie Stone and Douglas High School shooting. The picture came up on my Facebook on Sunday that was heartbreaking. It brought home how fragile life really is. It was a picture of a woman with her arms around another woman, two mothers waiting to hear the news about their children. The Parkland, Florida shooting killed 17 people and injured 17 others. And it happened on February the 14th, 2018. It was a picture that I remember seeing when that first happened. Now we've all seen pictures like that too often, but this one, however, was different. One of the women had ashes on her forehead in the shape of a cross. She had been marked with a sign of mortality and the fragileness of life, the same sign which will mark many of you tonight and this evening. Many of you will share that mark in your own homes because of another reminder we have of our mortality. There she stood, among the ashes of uncertainty, fear, death, sorrow, and loss. I'm sure that when those ashes were, were put on her forehead earlier in the day, she never thought that she would be standing where she was. None of us would have thought that either. We don't want to consider the possibility, let alone face that reality, and yet that's the truth that Ash Wednesday holds before us. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We live in a tension between the uncertainty of life and the certainty of death. And we work pretty hard at denying and ignoring and forgetting and, and trying to overcome those realities but they are always there. How do you handle that in your own life? In what ways have those two realities, uncertainty of life and the certainty of death, made themselves known in your life? The reminders of mortality and the fragileness of life are all around us. They come every time a loved one or a friend dies. And it's even more stark when it happens to someone young and, and even a small child. The reminder also comes with an aging body. And tonight I mourn for the life and the loss of John Stansfield, who was a, a dear friend of our congregation. But there's also gun violence, suicides, many of them since this COVID pandemic came the pandemic itself and our aging population that leaves us wondering when, where, and who will be mourning next. Cemeteries stand as monuments of our mortality. And if you've ever sifted through the ashes of your life, you have wondered where it has gone and where it is going. So what do you do with that? How do we live with that uncertainty of life and the certainty of death? As much as we might want to escape these two realities, we cannot. Nothing we can do will change or prevent them. What if naming and facing those realities is the first step in taking back our lives? Well, you see, that is what this day, Ash Wednesday, is all about. We remember we are dust, and to dust we shall return. And that's the challenge. It's not as easy as it sounds. We can wash off the ashes, but the truth remains. Life is fragile, and we are mortal. So what if we are marked with the ashes for another reason or an opposite reason? Instead, the ashes proclaim that everything matters. 
There is nothing that is not important or not significant. Everything matters. Every word we speak, every action we take, and every choice that we make. Every person in our life, every relationship, every moment matters. There is nothing that does not matter. What if Lent is a time for remembering and then reclaiming those treasures? What if we should be storing up our treasures for heaven? As our scripture told us this evening, what if it's about retreasuring the people and things that we've taken for granted or ignored or devalued or set aside? I want us to come to Lent in a different way this year. I want us to reclaim what's right. The people and things that are the ultimate importance of our earthly life that are impossible to measure. Maybe failing to reclaim what is right is what lies behind the pain of our brokenness. And that too often fills our lives. Maybe this is the sin from which we need to turn away. So what are the treasures that you hold deep in your heart? What are the values and the hopes and the dreams in which you give your heart? What if we made this Lent a time to retreasure those things, to retreasure people and relationships, to retreasure justice and compassion and love and, and forgiveness and hope? What if we were to reclaim them as the treasures of our lives? If our Lenten practice was to reclaim and retreasure the things that you value, how might that change your life? I would say that as we reclaim and retreasure the things we hold deep in our heart, we get our lives back. We become more whole and and more complete. As our lives ch are changed, we are better able to offer our treasures back to God and to the people. Now, I don't know what your treasure is, but I know you have them. And I also know this. Even as life is changing and passing, the treasures of the heart never go away. They are the treasures of heaven here on earth. They are the treasures that neither moth nor rust consume, and thieves do not break in and steal. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. As you are marked with the ashes of mortality and reclaim your treasures, also reclaim your heart and your life. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us sing the hymn, I Want Jesus to Walk With
God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Make these actions be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. At this time, you are invited to use your ashes or to just use your fingers to apply the sign of the cross on your forehead with the words, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us to the glory of saints to the glory of your resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declared that it was good. Protect mountains and valleys and apes, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to do for the well-being of all people. And raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant us comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are loved, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those yearning towards baptism, and call all us all to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For God, you are our life and you are our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in the faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and our, all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. In this season, we are
are called to the discipline of Lent. Over these 40 days, we will take our place alongside Jesus in the wilderness. We will reflect and pray for God's strength and guidance to grow us in our faithfulness and obedience to the ways of Jesus Christ. Let us give alms with glad and generous hearts. Let us place our treasure before Christ's throne in heaven, for there our heart is also. We will worship now with our offering.
community that God is reflecting. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.